Hey everybody, welcome back to another The Division 2 video. Now, having done our basic introduction to the game, what is The Division 2? This is going to be the first in many how-to guides uh, to introduce new players to the game and everything it has to offer. Now, the first thing I want to start off with for this and any other future guides that are going to be coming out in the next couple of days and weeks, there's there's a caveat to almost all this information. Now, the developers of The Division 2 are currently undergoing a pretty massive um, update to almost everything in the game lots of quality of life improvements a lot of foundational groundwork is being laid to help make the future of the game when it comes to like player quality of life and things like that you know to put those things in a better place in the future um, to give you a brief example of what i'm talking about Here's the actual project. Um, it's called Project Resolve. It's currently stated to be released in February. Now, like with everything when it comes to MMOs and games like this, that time frame could change. And some of the information that they talk about here could also change. But I just want to be up front and let you know that in the future, some of this information might change. Now, for what we're going to be talking about in this video, probably not quite as much, but it is possible. So just to get that out of the way, here's the um, actual website. I will put the link to the information about Project Resolve in the description. That way, if any of you want to check it out on your own, on your side, because there is quite a bit here. <laughs> Again, they are literally going over all aspects of the game to try to make it better. You know, and, and again, to try to make the future of the game um as as fantastic as they can and i think it's absolutely amazing so yes this will be in the description you can find it there that way you can look at it further um on your own time now moving past that there is a lot to talk about when it comes to the division two it's an absolutely massive um game in this video, it's going to be an introduction to basically how loot and gear and all that stuff works. Um, to any of my MMO players out there, a lot of it is going to seem very, very familiar. Um, as a new player, as you start the game, you will start encountering loot very fast. And they basically come in tiers. And I made up a little infographic. It's not the most amazing thing in the world, but it gets the job done. So, these are the tiers that the game will introduce and that you will see going forward. And again, for my MMO players out there or ARPG players out there, these colors are going to seem very familiar and you're going to feel right at home. Starting at the very top and working our way down, you have Worn. This is going to be like, in most MMOs, this is going to be the trash gear that you start off with. The stuff that you pick up just to start filling in your inventory slots. And then you got Standard, which is a little bit better. Now, things start changing once we hit Specialized. Once you hit Specialized um, tier when it comes to weapons and gear, that's when you start running into things like Talents, which we'll talk about that a little bit. And you can start seeing this information on this side. Superior is basically just the next upgrade past uh, Specialization. The ones we are primarily going to concentrate on and the ones that will matter once you hit endgame is basically high-end exotic and gear sets. Those are going to be the ones that are going to matter the most. And 
those are going to be the ones that have the most in-depth mechanics and you know stat bonuses and talents added to them. Those you will not encounter towards your end of um, either the base game to Division 2 or Warlords of New York, the expansion. Um, and those will be where you spend primarily most of your game working towards, progressing towards, and making builds out of. So, now that we have the tiers out of the way and how that works, how do we get gear? You know, how in the Division 2, how do you get gear? Kind of like I talked in the first video, the Division 2 is a little bit of multiple game genres. It's a looter shooter, meaning that kind of like in an ARPG, you will get usable, fully ready gear and weapons off of enemies. Just killing enemies, you will get gear. Not fragments, not pieces, but usable gear, usable weapons, dropping right off of enemies. Now, kind of like in MMOs, you can also get gear and weapons by doing, you know, quest lines and side quests, uh, projects and things like that. You can get them from things like, you know, just to show you a couple different things, there are multiple different types of projects that will reward equipment and weapons. You have daily projects that will give you equipment. You have weekly projects and all kinds of different things that will also reward equipment. As you are progressing as a new player, you will get um, the option to do side missions, which are basically, again, using MM motors, basically just side quests that will reward you uh, equipment or blueprints to make equipment. Now, talking about the blueprints, there is crafting in the Division 2. Crafting is also another main option that you will use to acquire gear and weapons. Crafting, we're going to leave for another video because that's its own separate beast that deserves its own video. But that's another main way that you will get gear. So, drops for enemies, rewards, projects, quests, side quests. And crafting are your main avenues for finding and acquiring gear and weapons. Now, now that we have, how do we get this stuff out of the way? Let's actually open up our inventory and start breaking down what these look like, where they go, and what all this, you know, is used for. So... Opening up your inventory, you're going to see a lot. Now, in this video, we are primarily only going to be talking about gear and weapons. That's it. We'll talk a little bit about some of the attributes and some of the added functionality that's involved with gear and weapons. Things like mods and weapon accessories. But those are such a in-depth subject that those will all be covered in another video. Uh, there will probably be a separate video just for attributes and things like that and another video uh, when it comes to like build crafting and theory crafting where we'll talk about mods and weapon accessories and things like that. We'll just lightly touch it on this video. Now, your main section that you're going to concentrate on and that what we're going to talk about in this video is right here in the middle which is your gear so in the division two you have six gear slots starting from the left and working our way down you have mask backpacks chest armor gloves holsters and then knee pads so you have six total up here you have your weapon slots you have two main weapon slots and then one uh, slot that is only used for your sidearm. Now, let's start talking and getting a little bit more in-depth 
on the types and what all is available. When it comes to gear, we'll pull back our uh, uh, we'll pull back up our little infographic. As you progress, again, starting at that specialized um, tier level, you're going to start seeing more and more options. The first option that you will see are brand sets. Now, brand sets you will see at the very, very beginning. Brand sets basically provide added bonuses depending on how many pieces of that brand set you have. This is a perfect example of a brand set right here. This is the Petrov Defense Group. As you notice, it only has one section currently lit up because I'm only wearing one piece of it. So I get 10% LMG damage just by having one piece of this brand set on. If I equipped two, I would also get weapon handling. And if I equipped three, I would also get ammo capacity. One of the fun things about the Division 2 is the fact that you can mix and match different brand sets and gear sets and exotics, which we'll talk about as we go further in the video. But this is how brand sets work. You get added bonuses depending on how many pieces you equipped, and they come in three-piece sets. So, moving on, the next thing I want to talk about are gear sets. Now, gear sets you will not encounter until towards the end once you reach end game content. Gear sets are kind of like brand sets, except for being a three piece bonus, it's a four piece bonus. And instead of just adding you know, basic stats like, you know, weapon damage or weapon handling and stuff like that. Gear sets add completely different functionality options to the game and unique talents to the game that you will not find anywhere else. This is a good example right here. This is the ongoing directive gear set. As you can see, it has a two, a three, and a four piece bonus. The four piece is where all the action and fun starts. Now for ongoing directive, it's four piece bonus is rules of engagement. So shooting a status affected enemy will apply a mark. Killing a marked en enemy grants a full clip of hollow point ammo for your active weapon and half a clip to all the other players in your group. Marks last for 10 seconds. And this right here will tell you what hollow point ammo does. That amplifies weapon damage by 20% and applies a bleed status effect. So gear sets like this, again, these will completely change how you as a player interact and play with the game gear sets are one of the main things that you are going to form builds around um, because these different functionality pieces that add that it adds to the game and different talents are just completely off the wall now outside of your four piece bonus the other thing that you can find on gear sets is talents now just to talk about talents real fast talents are a special type of bonus that can only be found on uh chess piece and backpacks and weapons now these will sometimes be something as simple as just you know added damage depending on you know a certain situation to when we're talking about gear sets, the talents for gear sets are completely unique and they're specifically designed to work with that particular gear set. Let me see if I have a backpack for ongoing directive since we've already talked about that one, I should. 
run over here to our stash real fast. Backpacks. Yep, here we go. So the talent for ongoing directive that you can get off the backpack increases the duration of the bleed status effect and all bleed damage by 100%. Again, this synergizes with the four piece gear bonus that you get from ongoing directive and you'll find the same thing on chess pieces uh here's the chess piece for ongoing directive the talent with that increases the hollow point damage so again when it comes to talents and gear sets they're unique talents that are specifically designed to synergize with the four piece bonus from that gear set. Now, you will find talents on high end pieces of gear. These are one piece set bonuses that will give you all kinds of different functionalities. Um, here's one right here. Actually, let's use a different one because that's a named item and we'll talk about that next. Okay, so here's a perfect example. Now, this talent is obliterate. Critical hits increase total weapon damage by 1% for 5 seconds. Stacks up to 25 times. Now, talents on normal pieces of high-end gear and weapons are random. You can pick up 5 different chess pieces and find 5 different talents on them. Same thing with weapons. You can pick up five different weapons and find five different talents on them. That's where some of the, you know, looter shooter ARPG aspects come up. It's that chase, trying to find the perfect combination of, you know, gear attributes, weapon attributes, and talents, and things like that, just like you would in an ARPG. Now, that we got talents out of the way, let's talk about exotics. Now, exotics are the other piece of equipment that you will run into. Let me find a good example. Let's see. Do, 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 do. What do I have? Actually, hold on. Okay, so here's a good example. And I didn't click on it. There we go. So exotics are basically pieces of gear that kind of like high end, um, you know, talents and kind of like some of the talents from gear sets. They add completely new bonuses and functionality to the game. This is a perfect example, uh, example of what I'm talking about. This is a mass called Catharsis. Now, what this talent does is, as you can see, it is super in-depth. Uh, basically, it grants the talent Vicious Cycle. Taking damage builds stacks up to a cap of 30. Each stack grants 1% weapon damage. Taking damage at max stacks triggers a purge, removing all the stacks and whatever status effects might be affecting you and dropping a healing cloud, which restores 5% of max armor for 10 seconds to everybody in the cloud. Exotics are crazy, folks. These things can absolutely change large portions of the game whether it's dropping healing clouds on you and giving you more damage whether it's changing how weapons behave or grenades behave to all kinds of weird and crazy things in between now exotics are actually so powerful that in the division two you can only have two equipped at any given time you can have one exotic in your gear slots, and you can have one exotic in your weapon slots. That's it. In the Division 1, if I remember correctly, you could have a build totally filled with all the exotics you wanted, and that 
that shit was nuts. So <laughs> I, I definitely agree with the change because, yeah, um, this forces more build diversity and creativity. And there's still plenty of power creep. So <laughs> exotics, you get one gear and then one weapon. Now, now that we have gear out the way, let's talk about weapons a little bit more. So currently in the game, when it comes to your options for weapons, for your two main weapon slots, slots which are these two right here, you have quite a few different options. There's currently six categories. Uh, there's rifles, assault rifles, submachine guns, light machine guns, marksman rifles, and shotguns. And there, there is a play style, you know, for every player out there. Um, marksman rifles are usually single burst. Um, they are kind of like a mixture. They're like an in-between between a fully automatic rifle um and no sorry rifles are usually single burst usually like three round bursts they're semi-automatic for the most part they're like a go between between fully automatic rifles and marksman rifles which are usually bolt action one shot or could be semi-automatic and the marksman rifles are more like sniper rifles and things like that so if you want to be a sniper one of my buddies in my clan in the division two is an absolutely badass sniper uh to the point that it can kind of be annoying sometimes because like he'll just start sniping people before i can even with get within range he's an absolute badass with a marksman rifle or like i said if you want something that's uh more semi-automatic or fully automatic you know you got rifles and assault rifles there's submachine guns which are fully automatic you know, high RPM, um, just machines that spray death everywhere, but the range does um, get reduced quite a bit to kind of compensate for that. Um, this is a perfect example. Let me see. I should have... So yeah, this is a perfect example of an SM, SMG. As you can see, you got 12,000 RPMs, which is rounds per minute. You're spraying bullets out of this thing like nobody's business. Um, but usually with SMGs to kind of compensate, the mags, which are magazines, tend to be on somewhat of the lower side. You can modify them to get a little bit bigger, but they're usually around like 20 or 30. That's how many bullets you have in a magazine before you have to reload. And the total damage, as you can see, does start to drop a little bit compared to things like shotguns, uh, which usually have some of the smallest magazine sizes in the game and some of the lowest RPMs. But as you can see, do massive amounts of damage. Now, to compensate this, shotguns also have some of the shortest ranges in the game. Um, as you can see right down here, the drop-off for this shotgun is definitely far, far closer than it is for this um, assault rifle right here. So, like in all good games of this type, there's pros and cons for everything, and there's a you know weapon for every type of playstyle. Again, like I said, if you want to be a sniper rifle, have at it, Hoss. You can find a weapon and a playstyle and a build that will totally let you take out you know enemies in one or two taps, you know, halfway across the screen. Um, you know, if you want to be you know. John Rambo or Arnold from the 80s and just, you know, mow people down with uh, LMG. You can totally do that, too. Uh, like I said, there's plenty of different options when it comes to what type of weapons you want to equip in these two main slots. Now, this third slot, this is your sidearm slot. The only weapons that can go into here are sidearms. Now, 
these fall under three categories. You got semi-automatic, which is kind of like the card right here. Um, somewhat decent RPMs, usually bigger uh, magazine sides, but these will usually have the lowest total damage output out of the three. The next are revolvers. Like this snub-nosed right here. Uh, even lower RPMs, even smaller mag size, but we got bigger damage. And there are actually a couple sawed-off shotguns that you can get in the game as well. These bad boys will smack. As you can see, this is the fire starter. This is actually one of the specialized shotguns that one of the classes that's available in the game, which again... Classes are going to be its own separate video. Um, this is what it can get a hold of. And as you can see, it only has two bullets in its magazine, but it does massive amounts of damage. And again, it does have some of the shortest range in the game. The nice thing about sidearms, regardless of which of the three you are going to use, is you have unlimited bullets you will never have to worry about running out of bullets when it comes to your sidearm. Your two main weapons, though, you will have to be cognizant of the fact that you only have so many bullets on you at any given time and that you will have to reload at you know, one of the millions of ammo boxes that are found all over the map and in dungeons. As you're doing dungeons, at certain breakpoints, you will always find an ammo box um, and a support box with either heal kits or grenades to kind of stock up a little bit for the next stage of the dungeon. So these are your three weapon slots. You got two main slots and you got your sidearm. Now, moving forward, we've already talked a little bit about you know brand sets and gear sets and exotics. The next thing I want to talk about is named items. Now, named items are, as you can see right here, they are high-end pieces of equipment that have static bonuses or talents that will always be on that item. A uh, perfect example these contractor gloves. Now, unlike every other piece of equipment in the game, named items will always come with a static either set bonus, like these gloves right here. These contractor gloves will always come with this 8% damage to armor. Doesn't matter how many you pick up, if you see the name Contractor's Gloves in orange right here, you know for a fact that it's a named item with this orange coloring in the name. And you will always know for a fact that it will have this damage to ar armor attribute on it. Now, the third attribute will always be random. So just like all um, high-end items, this third one will be random. But unlike regular high-end items, it's only the third. When it comes to item attributes, these two minor attributes are always random. If you pick up 12 of these Savannah Field Gloves, you will most likely see 12 different combinations of these minor attributes. Now, depending on the brand set... This core attribute will always be static. And I know this is a lot of information that I'm throwing at you folks. And thankfully, uh, the player base, the player community uh, in the Division 2 is absolutely filled with some amazing folks um, that have put together some absolutely awesome resources over the years. And I'm actually going to show you one of them right now. Let's go ahead and let's close this. Let's open this. So, this is the Tom Clancy's The Spreadsheet 2. 
this is, again, this is how massive this game is, and this is why there's going to be so many videos in this how-to series, because this game is absolutely ginormous. Uh, thankfully, these folks right here, uh, a couple of years ago, put together this spreadsheet. It's honestly a, a game changer. There's so much valuable information in here, and as you can see, it's constantly being updated. It was literally updated just like a week ago. Um, so it's a valuable resource. And I will also link the URL so you can access the spreadsheet too if you want in the description of the video below. But yeah, these folks are absolutely amazing. And all the folks... Um, that were involved in the development of this spreadsheet. There's actually a credits um, section of the spreadsheet. Yeah, all these folks are just heroes in the Division Two community. Um, but to give you an idea of what I'm talking about when it comes to brand sets, this is just a small, uh, yeah, this is a small fraction of how detailed and how in depth this game is um, so here's your core attribute now as you can see there are three different types of core attribute you have armor you have skill tier and you have weapon damage now going back to our inventory real fast I'll show you a quick example of what those three look like so Here's the core attribute for weapon damage. It's always going to be a percentage, you know, percentage value of weapon damage. Here's armor. It will always be a, per, you know, a certain amount of armor that you can get. And here's skill tier. Skill tier is always one skill tier point. That's it. It doesn't fluctuate. You don't get like half a skill tier point or two skill tier points. It's always one skill tier point those are the core attributes that depending on the gear set or the brand set you will always find that core attribute now for the minor attributes which are down here these are the ones that are randomized these are the ones that you will pick up randomly um and have different stats in there all the time outside of like what we were talking about named items named items will either a have a static attribute that is always there or in the case of backpacks and chest pieces i should have I know for a fact I have some named backpacks. Here we go. When it comes to named backpacks and chest pieces, these will not have static attributes. Instead, usually most of the time, what you're going to find are perfectly rolled talents. These are perfect versions of of standard talents with higher percentages whether it's damage whether it's defense whether it's you know longer time durations um these are where you're going to find the perfect versions of those talents let me see i should have yeah here we go so here's an example okay so here's a backpack with the regular talent wicked as you can see, it applies, you know, applying a status effect increases total weapon damage by 18% and 20 seconds. Whereas with the named perfect version, that increases that um, time, that time frame. I believe it also increases the damage too, now that I think about it. Let's see, 18. Uh, uh. No, so it is the same weapon, but it does give it a, a seven second increase. Now, to keep track of all these different talents and brand sets and different things like that, 
that's where um, our handy dandy spreadsheet comes into play. As you can see down here, you have all kinds of different things available uh, to you. Um, you have total break breakdowns of all the different, you know, gear, you know, weapon talents. You have, you know, breakdowns of the named weapons, the exotic weapons, basically everything you could possibly ever want or need is all right here. This is where you're going to find everything. So, again, the URL for this spreadsheet will be put into the description underneath the video. Um, take a look at it, you know, especially if you do decide to give the game a try. As you progress through the game, as you get closer to end game and you start running into the different talent sets and different brand sets, um, this resource will be you know, absolutely invaluable. Just to give you a quick breakdown of just how much um, is involved and, and just how many options you have. There's currently 28 brand sets in the game. There's 18 gear sets. There's 49 gear talents. There's 54 weapon talents. There's 43 named pieces of gear alone. Again, it's massive. So yes, please take a look at this um, once you do get towards end game because this spreadsheet is going to help you a lot. It's it's invaluable. Okay, all right, moving on. So the last thing I want to talk about is just some of the different things that you will experience and some of the different things we will talk about in future videos just briefly now as you will have noticed we didn't even touch on some of the other aspects of the inventory screen and of the actual ui when it comes to looking at weapons and gear because again these are totally you know different systems that have their own complete workings uh, we didn't talk about expertise we didn't talk about the ranking system we did not talk about you know any of the different gear and skill mods and stuff like that because I don't want to overwhelm you folks. And especially since we're already going into like 37 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so those will all be um, included in future videos in my how-to series for The Division 2. This one I just wanted to give you all a breakdown of, again, where do you get gear and weapons from? How do you tell the various tiers and some of the more important things like brand sets, gear sets, and exotics and stuff like that? Anyways, that's the video. That is our you know introduction to gear and weapons and items in general in the Division 2. And there will be many more how-to guides coming up very soon. As always, I appreciate you all. Please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And until next time, this is your pal Trandell signing out.